Over to you, Cindy. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today uh, with Tim from Adobe. We're really excited to be working with him and the team to deliver these Adobe series to you. Today's session is on Premiere Rush. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you, Cindy. What a wonderful welcome. What a wonderful start. It's great to have a number of you from corporate and hopefully some other teachers who have just joined us as well from various schools around South Australia. And it's been a privilege to do these sessions with the South Australian Department for Education. From memory, I think this is about the fourth or fifth session that I've run. And uh, it's always been a delight to work with you guys. This one's on Adobe Premiere Rush. So it's a step up from Spark Video, which we did do a session on previously. And Spark Video would be the simplest way to make a video story. But I wouldn't call Spark Video a video production tool. It's got a lot of limits to it. Whereas Premiere Rush, well, that is definitely a video editing tool because even though it's not as sophisticated as Adobe Premiere Pro, which is our ultimate video editing solution, and that's what maybe you should be aiming for if you want to be serious about video production. But if you're just wanting to get a story done quickly, but you want to have a bit of power to it, and you want to actually create something that's pretty impressive, then Premiere Rush is the way to go. It is available on Android, on iOS, on the Creative Cloud through your laptop and your desktop. It is so accessible, and it's part of the Adobe Creative Cloud. And if you Want to use it on your phone? You can download it through your Google Play Store, or your Apple App Store, or on your tablet device. It's just such a flexible video editing solution. Before we dive into it though, let me just uh, make sure my screen sharing it is. I'm gonna play this video. Some of you would have seen this before. This just gives you an overview of all the Adobe applications that are used in education on a regular basis. And you'll see Rush featured in this video. It just puts Rush into the context of the whole Adobe Creative Cloud suite of applications that most schools around Australia now have full access to. Adobe's industry standard tools like Photoshop, Illustrator. Actually, I'm gonna stop that because I just forgot that I should be stop, stopping sharing my screen before I play those videos, because for some people it works and for some it doesn't. So now that I've stopped sharing my screen, let me play that video again. Adobe's industry standard tools like Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Animate, InDesign and Dreamweaver are vital for media, IT and arts educators in K-12 and tertiary classrooms across the globe. But these days there are a growing number of simple to use tools like Spark Video for quick and simple video stories, Spark Post for digital posters and social graphics, Spark Page for quick web pages that Adobe will host for you, Aero for augmented reality experiences, Acrobat DC for PDF manipulation, Adobe XD, a design thinking tool for designing, prototyping and sharing the designs of apps and websites, Dimension for making 3D models, Rush for powerful video editing on your mobile and desktop devices, Fresco, which is the ultimate drawing tool for the iPad and Surface Pro. Photoshop for the iPad. The new Photoshop camera. Character Animator for real-time animation. The new Illustrator on the iPad app and more. These apps are being used by maths and science educators, English and humanities teachers, law professors, health and physical education teachers, and in any K-12 or tertiary curriculum area that is looking to add an extra level of engagement and creativity into the learning and teaching process. Get to know these apps through the Adobe Education Exchange, which is getting close to 1 million members across the globe with a wide variety of new, free online self-paced courses and resources for educators. The Adobe Education Exchange is made by teachers 
for teachers. It's a great way to learn how and why Adobe tools are so beneficial in all curriculum areas. It is also the gateway to the new Adobe Creative Educator program, which is a badging program designed for any educator in any curriculum area and level. You don't have to be an Adobe expert to be an Adobe Creative Educator. We do hope you enjoyed this session. Please do share what you learned today with your colleagues and wider education networks. Use this QR code or link if you would like to follow up anything that was presented during this session or if you would like to join the Australasian Adobe in Education monthly news update. Enjoy this session. Did you recognise the voice and that voiceover artist? What a fantastic voiceover artist. Now, my name is Dr. Tim Kitchen and I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. So I, I really probably should be wearing my mask at the moment, but I'm not going to do that. We've been in lockdown now for, well, not quite a week, but it looks like it's going to drag on for a little bit longer. Let's hope that it doesn't happen to you guys, but as you can see how fragile things are, anything's possible. So having a tool like Premiere Rush available for you to do video production is not only great if you do have to go into lockdown and everything has to be done through video, but let's face it folks, we now are teaching in a blended mode. Good teaching, good pedagogy is not about teacher directed anymore. It's all about facilitating the learning. And if you can develop video production skills, video editing skills, it opens up a whole new realm of communication that you can have for your students. But more importantly, think about the value of this tool for your students, allowing them to, to construct their learning in incredibly creative ways through video production. So let's jump into it as soon as we can. The Adobe Creative Cloud set of applications are available, as I said, in most schools around Australia. And if you're not sure how much access you have at your school, then um, it's worth having a chat with your IT department at your school just to see how much access you do have. And hopefully you have full access and therefore you have access to Premier Rush. Uh, you'll notice that every Victorian Department of Education secondary school and also every New South Wales Department of Education secondary and primary school have full access to the Adobe Creative Cloud because they have a centralised arrangement where the, the government provide all their software for all of their schools. Whereas in South Australia, in Queensland, in Western Australia, uh, in Northern Territory, uh, the schools are given a budget in order to decide what software is going to be appropriate for their schools. So you as a school make a decision as to whether you would like to have access to the Adobe Creative Cloud. So your school may or may not have access, and that's important for you to work out first to see whether you have access to Premiere Rush. As I said earlier, it is a wonderful, flexible video editing solution. Everything I'm about to show you, everything we're about to work on together, you can do on your phone, your tablet, your laptop, or your desktop. Can I get you to now to open up Premiere Rush and see if you can actually flick between building a video with me or uh, just watching what I do, if you want to, that's fine. Um, if you can flick between two screens, that's terrific. If you happen to have two screens, that's even better. One screen watching my demo, the other screen actually working along with me. It'd be fantastic if you're able to actually produce a video or the beginnings of a video anyway on Premiere Rush as I'm teaching you. And so let's just see how we go with that. I'm going to give you some resources while you're opening up Premiere Rush. Sometimes it takes a little while to actually open and load, depending on how powerful your machine is. But let's use some resources from my resource here called timkitchen.net slash wash hands. I'm going to grab the link to that resource page and put it into the chat so that you get direct access to it. If you've been on a session with me before, maybe one of the Spark sessions that we've done, I've used this resource as well to build either a poster or a very short little video story with Spark Video based on hand hygiene. We're going to do the same thing with Premiere Rush. We're going to use the similar resources to build a video about hand hygiene. So open up that resource while Premiere Rush is opening, even if it's not, if it's loaded up at the moment, that's great. And once you've clicked on timkitchen.net slash wash hands, this is what you should be seeing. We're not going to grab all of the resources here, but what I would like you to do is first of all, grab this music backing track. If you do a right click 
on that where it says here, click here for a music backing track, do a right click and go, actually in this case we might need to just click on it and pause it. So this is just a bit of music we're going to use for our video. Once you've done that, you can then right click and save audio as. So I'll just go through that process again. It's a matter of just clicking where it says click here, that will open up the soundtrack and start playing the soundtrack. Just pause it, you don't need to play it just yet, but do a right click on it and go save audio as. What I recommend we do is we're going to save it into a folder, probably on your desktop somewhere temporary just for the sake of this resource. I'm going to go to my desktop, I'm going to create a folder and call it Rush uh, SA, that'll do. And that soundtrack is now being saved into that folder. We're now going to save a couple of still images and a couple of short videos as well. So we go back to Tim Kitchen Wash Hands. This image here, I actually created this image with Adobe Fresco, the drawing app that was described in that video. Fantastic drawing app. I'm not a drawer, but look what I can produce with Adobe Fresco. It's so cool. It's, a, it's one of the first drawing applications for the iPad or the iPhone that allows, and also Windows tablet as well, that allows you to draw with vectors, but also with bitmaps. So it actually has a combination of both of those. If you know anything about Photoshop and Illustrator, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you don't, trust me, it's brilliant, it's free, it's well worth looking at. It's Adobe Fresco. I'm going to do a right click on that picture, I'll get you to do the same. Right click, save image as, and find your folder and add that still image, that JPEG image into the mix. Let's scroll down, this is our first piece to camera here, this is my daughter and she is doing a piece to camera. So to download this piece to camera, just click on it once, you'll hear a tone, stop it because it's annoying, then do a right click and go save video as, and then save that video into your folder that you've created. So by doing that, you should have in your folder, let me just check my folder now, if you haven't already, you should very soon have a folder with a JPEG image. Oh, sorry, my JPEG isn't working properly. That's right, I need to do that separately. Um, you should have an MP3 audio file and an MP4 video file. Let's go to the other piece of camera. We'll just download this one as well. Just pause it, right click and save video as. And then we'll do one more picture, this picture here of step one of the washing of the hands. Do a right click on that, save image as, and that should go into your folder too. I'm having some issues with Firefox, so I'm going to open these up with Chrome, just so I can get those still images done properly, because Firefox isn't allowing me, for some reason, to download a JPEG, so I'm just doing that quickly now, and find the folder, and that's better, and now I'll grab this other one to save image as, and now I've got it. So in the next minute or two, hopefully all of you who are working with me have some resources to work with for our video, you'll have two JPEGs, one MP3 and two MP4s. Before I go any further, I would love to know if you have you've got yourself ready and if you're actually going to be building a video with me or if you're just, if it's just too much for you at this stage and you just want to follow along, that's perfectly fine. So I want you to go to the chat and I want you to tell me, uh, yes, you're going to build a video with me, or no, you're just going to follow along. Go to the chat, let me know. I just want to get a sense of what's happening here in the audience. Heather is going to be creating a video with me, so is Julie, so is Abigail. Uh, Meredith is just going to follow along, that's perfectly fine, Meredith. And so is Carolyn, that's fine. And Lily, sorry, can't get into the Adobe, that's okay, Lily, just follow along, and then you'll have access to the recording to be able to do that. Uh, so we've got at least Heather, Julie and Abigail who are working with me and I'm just going to assume that everyone else is, oh Louise is going to work with me too, that's terrific, good. All right, so now that we've kind of got the resources and every good video story has a combination of still images, moving images and audio files, so you've got all the ingredients here 
let's just put it together. It's like doing some cooking. You've got your ingredients. Now we're going to make a meal and the meal is going to be a fantastic little video story. Let's open up Rush. I'm just going to bring Rush to the share screen. First thing that happens when you open up Premiere Rush is it asks you if you want to create a new project and it also has all your other projects that you may have been working on there for you to re-edit and rework with. Assuming this is your first time with Rush, you will just have nothing there but a button that says create a new video project. So go ahead and click that button and I'm just going to get my little pointer working so that you know where my cursor is. So go ahead and click create a new video project. Once you've done that, you'll start recognizing some of these uh, buttons because they are your computer. That's your access to your desktop, to your documents, your downloads, your hard drive. I'm using a Mac, so that's what the Mac looks like. You'll be potentially on a PC and that's perfectly fine. You'll be seeing your PC icons as well. What I'm looking for now is my desktop and there's my folder that I created that has all my assets into it. So I'm going to click on that folder and there they're all there sitting for waiting for me to bring into my video story. So just like with any video production, you need to sort of organize your assets first. But with Rush, you don't necessarily have to organize all of your assets first. You can just organize maybe a few of them, get started, then you can add more and more as we go along. Let's bring these assets into a timeline. The way to do that is by clicking just clicking them and I'm going to click them all randomly from one to six. But um, if you know exactly what order you want them to be in your timeline, you can order them in exactly the way you want to. Down the bottom left hand corner, there's a little section here called project name and at the moment it's untitled. Let's call it uh, wash your hands. That'll be the title to the little video story. And I just want to I'll just make this a bit smaller so you can see the whole thing because right down the bottom there's a couple of tick boxes here. If you go sync with Creative Cloud and click that little tick box, it means that every time you create well, well this particular story that you're creating will also be synced to your Creative Cloud library, which means you can then go onto your phone. And for some reason, I don't have my phone with me, which is very unusual. I'm not sure why I've done that. But I could go to my iPad and maybe later on I could keep working on the same story on my iPad or on my phone because it's synced to the cloud. And I, as long as I've logged in with the same login that I use, which is my school email address and gone in through my school ID, then you should be fine. You can just keep working on the same project. It does take a little bit longer to sync with the cloud, so I'm going to untick that for the sake of this demo, but it just gives you an idea of how you can do that if you want to. The last thing you want to do now is go to the bottom right hand corner where you've got a create button. And once you've clicked that create button, all your media starts coming down into a timeline. And any second now, we'll start seeing the beginnings of our video story. And hopefully you have got your assets on your timeline and it's looking very similar to what I've got. Before I go any further, I'm going to pause this chapter and in the next chapter, which I'm about to uh, start recording again, we're going to actually learn how to manipulate and reorder things and superimpose things on top and just play with the timeline and start building your story and make it look really, really cool. Chapter two of this session with the Department for Education in South Australia, and we're looking at Adobe Premiere Rush. We've already downloaded some assets to work with. We've downloaded two still images, two videos, and a soundtrack. And we've brought them into Premiere Rush, and we've started our project. And you can see on our timeline here, the timeline, uh, if I grab this little blue line here, we call this the playhead. And I'll just point that out where my, my cursor is. As I scrub through the timeline, left to right, we can start seeing what this video is going to look like. In fact, if I hit the play button, let's just see if you can hear this. You hear the soundtrack, and you see a couple of pictures, and you'll hear the tone, you'll hear the button, you hear my daughter talk. According to the World Health Organization. All right, so we've got the ingredients there. I think we might, if I scrub right to the end, we have another picture. So we've got one, two, 
for some reason I've got that other picture there at the end too. Don't know how that happened, but anyway. So what I want to do now is I want to get this into some sort of order because every good video story has a structure to it, a good beginning, middle, and a good end. And the beginning of this story really probably should be this second video. If we, if we play it from when the tone stops. What is the world? Take it back a little bit. According to the World Health Organization, most healthcare associated infections are preventable through good hand hygiene. Okay, that's the start of my story. So I want to grab that bit of footage and drag it to the start of the story. Literally like that, click and drag, and now I've repositioned it. But I don't want these color bars or that tone there. If I hit play now, and I'm hitting play with my space bar or with the play button. According to... And you can hear the tones, you can hear the, see the color bars, you can hear, even hear me in the background saying action. And as soon as I said action, she starts to talk. There's not much of a gap there either, which makes it a little bit hard to edit, but we'll get there. To do the editing, I'm just going to go to the edge of the, the where it's yellow. I'm just going to trim it. I'm just going to drag to the right until I see her mouth about to open. So I think it's about there. And now when I hit the play button, According to the now, I can hear me saying the action. And again, because it's so tight, I'm going to have to zoom in to get a bit more detail. To do the zooming in, down the bottom is a slidey bar that allows you to slide left and right with your uh, timeline, but at the edges of the slidey bar are a couple of handles. If you click those handles and drag towards the left, you can see how that zooms right in on your time bar to give you almost frame by frame detail. So let's see. According to There's not a lot of room to there, but I'm going to trim it just a little bit more so I don't want to hear me saying action. According to the world That's almost perfect. Play it again. According to the World Health Organization. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Not, as I zoom back out again now so I can see the rest of my timeline, notice that my soundtrack has moved with me. I don't want that. I want my soundtrack there. So I'm going to click it and just drag it back into position. So it's a bit like almost like playing Tetris in a way, just moving things around where you want them to go. And now when I take my playhead back to the start and hit the play button. According to the World Health Organization, most health... I've got a good start to my story. So you can see the trimming is pretty simple. It's just click and drag from those little yellow markers on the clip. And then if you were to sort of move things around, just click and drag and move them around. But what if I wanted to make a cut in the middle of the edit? And in this case, I don't really want to, but let's just do one anyway. So according to the World Health Organization, let's say that at that point in time, I want to make a split in the cut and maybe add a, a logo of the World Health Organization or something like that. What I would do in that case is I would go to this little tool here, my little cutting tool, and just click on it once. And that makes an incision in the footage. And it allows me then to bring in maybe another image in where that incision is. And that could be the World Health Organization image. The music keeps going and I've just inserted the image that way. So it just shows you there's two ways of, of editing. One is just by clicking and dragging. And the other is by using the cutting tool. Now I don't really want that to happen. So I'm going to undo just by going Command or Control Z. And I'm going to undo until I've stopped that incision. Because what I do want to do, as soon as she says World Health Organization, I actually want to insert the image, just the text, the title World Health Organization. I want that to appear up in the top right hand corner. I want it to superimpose over the top. But let's find exactly where she says it. According to the World Health so she's saying it around about now. So we're the playhead now. That's exactly where I want the title World Health Organization to appear. Now to do titles, I want to introduce you to the top right hand corner where there's a series of menus in a sense. The very first one allows you to add graphics, including if I click add graphic, including titles, transition graphics, and overlays. And you can have all sorts of fun with those. Depending on how much storage your school has given you access to, it really depends on how many titles and how many graphics you get there by default. Um, you might have just minimal number to work with, but that's okay. You can work with what you've got. So if I click more titles on the top left hand corner here, we'll be able to see a whole range of titles. These are called motion graphic templates. They've been made with Adobe After Effects. So they look really cool as they sort of move and animate into your picture. 
but you can have almost total control. You can control what they say, you can control the colours as well. So I might have a lot more than what you've got, but um, you've even got just basic minimal, just simple lower third text or just a very simple basic text, or you can go with something pretty cool. I'm looking for something that will say World Health Organization. Maybe this one here, it says your vlog channel. You might have something similar to that. Um, I'm going to click it and drag it down and it's going to sit above my video layer. And it's just loading that motion graphic template into my story. And now if I scrub across, you'll see how it's going to superimpose. At the moment it says your vlog channel, but I want it to say World Health Organization. So it's also too big at the moment, so I'm just going to click on it and you can see these little handles that appear around the edges. They allow me, if I grab any one of those handles, just to scale it down and then I can use my mouse to position it where I want it to go. So I'm going to now double click where it says your vlog channel and change that to world health. And organize. Um, there's a tagline here as well. Uh, I might call it WHO. I'll do. Pretty happy with that. So let's see what that actually looks like when I start playing my story. According to the World Health Organization, we're getting a very um, you're getting a very low res playback. Therefore, it's a little bit stuttery. It's even stuttery for me. More, it'd be even more stuttery for you. But if you've done that yourself, you'll see it, it looks pretty good. And when we export it, um, it'll look fantastic. The reason why it's looking a bit scratchy at the moment is because we actually want to edit in low res, but then export out into a much better quality version. If we were playing back in its best quality, it would just run too slow for you. Everything will be really slow. Health organization. That looks pretty good. Let's play it again. The World Health Organization. Most healthcare associated with Alright, so I'm pretty happy with that, except I'm not totally happy with the colours. I'm thinking I might want to match the colours, not that there's a lot of colours in the in the video, but I might want to grab, say, the maroni colour that's in the, the rug and use that as the colour of my text. So notice on the right hand side, because I'm still in my text mode, I've actually got three elements here I can work with the text World Health Organization, the text who, and the shape. Uh, and if I open up any of those, it gives me a whole bunch of tools to play with that connect to whatever I've opened up. In this case, I want to change the color from purple to that maroni color. So I'm going to choose this little droplet tool just here. If I grab that little droplet tool and drag it over to the maroon in the rug, and now that's instantly changed the color of my text to that maroon color, so I get a different colour scheme to work with in that sense. So that's, that's as simple as that works. So the next chapter we're going to be looking at as I close down my titles and close down my graphics, we can get a sense of what we're doing. In the next chapter we're going to add some more elements and possibly even play with the different audio of the soundtrack and the voice and uh, we'll be back with the next chapter in just a sec. of this session with the Department for Education in South Australia on Adobe Premiere Rush. And we've already had a bit of a play with getting some assets into a story and manipulating those assets around a timeline to tell a story. Let me share my screen so you can see what we have done so far. And we've found at the start of the story, we've got the right beginning where my According to the world. Yeah, I just interrupted it. Try again. According to the World Health Organization, most healthcare associated with infections are preventable. Now, I want to actually stop the World Health Organization from appearing anymore, so I'm going to go to the edge of it and just trim it back because I want it to disappear by this point. Are preventable. Very good. See how it automatically transitioned? It transitions on by doing the organization. Right most healthcare associated with infections and automatically are preventable. Right, so. Very good. And because it's a motion graphic template, you don't get control over the animations, but you do get to control everything else within it. 
Now, what does she say here? She says, for good hand hygiene. So, you should wash your hands regularly and always after going to the toilet. So, we might want to add another title at that point, just to emphasise certain parts of the story, maybe good hand hygiene or um, wash your hands regularly or something like that. Now that I've shown you how to do the titles, you can just do that in your own time and uh, embellish the story in any way you want to. Uh, let's see what else she says here. You should wash your hands regularly. Hmm, okay, I'm thinking well, there's a rule in video production called the seven second rule. And that means you really shouldn't have any image going on the screen any longer than seven seconds. Because if you do, you start to lose the interest of your audience. It's a really interesting lesson. And when I'm teaching teachers as I am, uh, I ask the question, how often do you talk in front of your kids for more than seven seconds? <laughs> because if you do, <laughs> you're likely to be losing the interest of some of them <laughs> after seven seconds. I know it's hard, I know, I know, but their attention span is about seven seconds. In fact, someone did a PhD research on this and the average length of an edit in film and television is now down to 3.2 seconds. Our attention span is getting less and less. How do we deal with that as, as educators? Do we, do we just keep talking anyway and say, well, if you're not going to listen, you're not going to pass the test? That's really bad pedagogy. And one of the things I do uh, around the Asia Pacific region is encourage good pedagogy and encourage people to use all sorts of different ways to communicate with their students. And video is a fabulous way of connecting in. So what I'm thinking I might do here, because she, she mentions washing your hands, doesn't she? Let's add this again. So you should wash your hands. All right, as soon as she says wash your hands, I've just paused my playhead at that point. And I'm thinking this still image here, I could bring that up at around about the point where she says you should wash your hands. You should wash your hands. I'll bring that back a little bit to find the right timing. You should wash your hands. And that's fine just by having it fill the screen. That's perfectly fine. But in this case, I do want it just to appear in the top right hand corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on that picture and scale it down. But the, the white around the picture is a little bit too much. There's too much white space or probably too much of a border around this picture. So we're going to play with another tool on the right hand side. Uh, if we scroll down to the last of those categories of tools, and that is the transform tool. And this allows me, if you look down the bottom of it in the advanced section to do some cropping. I could crop a bit of the top, crop the bottom, just like you can do in Photoshop and in Illustrator and in InDesign and lots of other applications where you're cropping still images. We're doing that in a video now as well. That allows us to crop the still image. It could also allow me to crop a video file if I wanted to. And now I'm just going to reposition it slightly. And let's see what this looks like. You should wash your hands regularly and always after going to the toilet and before you eat. Probably keep it going for the extent of that. But I don't want the picture to suddenly appear regularly. like that. I'm thinking it'd be better if the picture transforms or sort of cross dissolves or fades in and then fades out. So this allows me now to go and play with the second category of tools up the top, cent, uh, top right hand corner. And these are the effect tools. And the first set of effects here are some transition effects. And you can see there's a range of them. I could wipe right and that one, just by clicking that, I've added two transitions to this picture because it was already highlighted. And now we'll get the effect of it. You should wash your hands regularly. That looks pretty good. And if I grab that transition, I can slow it down by clicking and dragging it. You should wash your hands regularly. And slow it down. That looks pretty good. But I was really keen to fade in and fade out. So as I click on that picture again, choose a dissolve instead of a wipe. And now I've got a fade in. Wash your hands regularly and always after going to the and toilet fade and out. before you eat. And I can control the speed of those fades as well. If I wanted to, I could just drag those transitions into the appropriate sections on the timeline. So you've got a bit of flexibility there. As soon as she stops talking, we've got back to these tones again. So I need to trim that out because I don't want those tones of the color bars. So that looks like. Good. And then I 
can do some more trimming over here just to get that working. Washing your hands properly involves a number of steps. Uh, stop it at that point. Steps. Trim that to there. Get rid of that extra picture. I don't really need that at the moment. Okay, so we're getting the idea. One thing to note in the timeline is that you can have up to four different layers of video and four different layers of audio. The way to see all your layers, if you go to the bottom left hand corner, there's a button here called control tracks. If I open that up, you can now see, um, I'll just get my pointer, one, two, three, and then the fourth layer is within the video. One, two, three, four layers of video. So it's quite a lot of power. And everything that we've just done, we could be doing on our phone. It was the first ever that I'm aware of video editing solution for your phone that gave you that capability of multiple layers. iMovie is now starting to do that. But when Premiere Rush came out, it was limited to just kind of one layer and just bringing things into that one layer. Now with Premiere Rush, you've got four layers of video, four layers of audio. Of course, um, if you're working with Premiere Pro, you have up to 99 layers of video, 99 layers of audio. That's why it's used at the highest level of multimedia. In fact, Marvel Studios are using Premiere Pro as their main video editing solution. And this is a cut down version of Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, in the next chapter, we're gonna have a look at audio and we're gonna just sort of allow us to be able to fine tune and balance our audio a little bit better. Video settings now. Now this is quite cool. Notice that at the moment, uh, when we listen to the soundtrack, when we listen to the According soundtrack. According to the World Health Organization, most healthcare associates. There isn't a lot of conflict there. The soundtrack is probably at a reasonably good volume compared to the, um, the voiceover. Uh, however, or the piece to camera, I should say, it's not a voiceover. Um, sometimes the soundtrack is just far too loud and you just want to bring it down a little bit so that you can hear the voice. And then when the voice stops, you can bring the, the sound back up again. Well, with Premiere Rush, that can happen automatically. We have a little bit of artificial intelligence built into the Premiere Rush engine that allows us to do that automatically. Let me show you how. When you click on the soundtrack and then go over to the top right hand corner and have a look at your audio button, your audio tools, you can see we can basically reduce the, the whole volume of the whole soundtrack if we wanted to, but in this case we just want to have it reduced a little bit while he's talking. So we're going to open up the advanced section here and choose this tool here called Auto Duck. And when you click on Auto Duck, it automatically recognizes that there is voice and therefore it brings the music down. It's probably bringing it down a bit too much. So I'm going to reduce by a little bit less or quite a bit less than that. So it's going to bring it down. And then notice here, if you look carefully where my cursor is, it brings the volume back up as soon as it realizes the talking has stopped. And then when there's more talking, it brings it back down again. So we're getting this type of effect. Take it from here, I think, uh, from here. Regularly and always after going to the toilet and, to and the before music. you eat. There you go, up a bit. And Washing your hands properly. There you go. And Job done. So that's by clicking on the soundtrack, opening up your audio set of tools and then clicking auto duck and it does that automatically, which is pretty cool. Let's see what else we can do before we finally export this project. Just to show you a few more of these tools. This one here uh, below the effects tool is our color tool and allows us to do some color grading. So I notice that with this particular bit of footage, it's a little bit dull. So if I go to Airy or some of these other color grades that are built into the system. I'm just looking for one that's going to brighten this up a little bit more. None of them are really jumping out at me. I'm a bit extreme. So if none of those really do it for me, I can go to this section here called edit. And I'll just go to none first before I go any further. And then go to edit. And I can play with the exposure. I can play with the contrast. I can play with the shadows, the temperature. Let's bring the temperature up a little bit. 
So I've got quite a bit of control here in terms of my color grading. If I wanted to just to bring a little bit more color to something that's not looking that great. And now we've got it. It just sort of brings it to life a little bit more. A few other effects that you can play with as well. This one below the color allows us to slow things down, do a bit of slow motion or speed things up. So you've got those sorts of controls as well within Premiere Ray. We've already had a look at our audio and we've had a look at our transform tools. Notice that outside of cropping, you can do some other things like feather the edge of, of, your, of your, your bit of footage or you can reposition, but you're better off doing that just by clicking and dragging. One of the other things with the effects tool is to do a pan and zoom. This is quite handy when you've got a still image. So if I've highlighted that still image of the hands being washed and then choose pan and zoom and just activate pan and zoom, let's see what effect that it provides me. You should wash your hands regularly and always after going to the toilet and yes. before you eat. Pretty dodgy in terms of um, what I'm doing, but it gives you an idea of, of doing that kind of zoom. Uh, pan and zoom without actually having to manually do that. You can automatically pan and zoom. I'm going to undo that because it doesn't really enhance the story that I'm telling. All right, so that is about it, folks. There's not a lot else to show you. If you wanted to throw in some other media uh, that you've sort of forgotten about or you thought, oh yeah, I want to grab another image or something, top left-hand corner, that allows you when you click on that plus symbol to add more media. You can go to your media, and you can go out of your Rush project and maybe into another folder, or if you wanted to bring it into your Rush folder and then add it from there, whatever you want to do, you've got total flexibility in terms of adding your media, adding more graphics, adding audios, adding voiceovers too. You can click on that button, or the other option is to go to your audio track and just click on the microphone symbol and that turns it into a record button. And then when you click record button, you get three seconds, and I won't do this now, but it gives you three seconds, and then you can just start recording your voiceover into your video story, if that's what you wanna do. So we're gonna do uh, two more chapters. We'll do one more chapter next, which will show you how to export your finished product. And then the final chapter will be some resource. and we're going to be showing you how to export your finished product. To make this a finished product, I'm thinking I might just fade the music out and maybe throw in some credits at the end, even though it's not quite really finished. Let's see what it does say at the end here. Number of steps. So around about this point in time, I want to fade out the music. I don't want the music continuing on. So I'm going to use my little cutting tool on the left-hand side, grab that little cutting tool, and it's now made the incision and I can delete the excess music. Notice this is non-destructive, so I can extend it or bring it back or whichever way I want to. That's the beauty of working with all of the Premiere product, Premiere Pro or uh, Premiere Rush. They are non-destructive non editing. But to get a fade out, it's the same as doing a cross dissolve. So I'm gonna go up to my transitions, my effects, go to my transitions and grab that little dissolve and just drag it to the end and maybe stretch it out a little bit so that it fades. Inside. There you go. So I've got my nice sort of fade out of the music. Let's get some credits happening uh, by going to my graphics again, my add my graphics, and look for something that sort of looks a little bit like closing credits. These do chop and change a bit. Oh, let's, let's see if I can find something pretty quickly. Otherwise, I'll grab anything. Nothing's really jumping out at me at the moment. That'll do, I suppose. I'm going to grab that one and bring it into my timeline. Let that load in. And then I can just play and readjust the credits and the colors if I wanted to as well. I'll just say, thanks for watching. And then the rest of this could be wash your hands. And I won't play with the colors just yet, but I'm just going to match the size of what I've got. And let's see what this looks like. Yep, that works for me. So I've got a nice finish. 
So as I said earlier, when you're doing a video story, you need to have a good beginning, a good middle and a good end. Well, I've kind of got my beginning, I've kind of got my middle and I've certainly got an end. So now that I've done that, let's go and finish and export the story because at the moment it's not a video. At the moment, it's still a Premiere Rush project. We need to make it into a video. So if I go up to the top left-hand corner where it says Share and click on the Share button, there is by default it goes straight to share to your local hard drive, which is what most of you will probably do. Let's give it a name. I'll call it Wash Hands. And I want to put it into the same folder that I created at the start of this session. So I'm going to click on Save to and point it towards my desktop and find my folder. It's always good practice to keep everything in your video into the one folder if you can. You have to do that when you're working with Premiere Pro. Premiere Rush, it's not as essential, but it's good work habit to get into and get your kids to do that. So I'm going to click choose that. It's estimating it'll be 21 megabytes, which is fine. If I wanted to readjust that, I could go to advanced settings and change the resolution. I can even be working in 4K if I had 4K footage to work with. Um, I can change the quality, but I'm pretty happy with that at the moment. And then I can click export. Notice the other options were there on the left hand side too. I could export it straight to my YouTube channel, straight to my uh, other channels too. Let me just check that for a sec. And first. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Behance. I could go straight to Behance if you're not familiar with it. It's a bit like LinkedIn for designers. It's a fa fabulous social media, but it's more a professional social media for people who are interested in design. Uh, so there's your other options of exporting it. Now that I've done that, let me just go to my folder on my desktop and see if I can find it. Wash hands MP4. Uh, is that the one? I think that's it. Yeah, that would be it. It's only 13 megabytes. It predicted 21, but it actually was a lot less than that. Let me open that up in QuickTime and bring that to the share screen. Fill my screen and click play. According to the World Health Organization, most healthcare associated infections are preventable through good hand hygiene. So, you should wash your hands regularly and always after going to the toilet and before you eat. Washing your hands properly involves a number of steps. Here we go, my video is done. Now of course if I did put that directly straight to YouTube, I could then stream it through my into my learning management system. Or you might have your own streaming service through your school, but as long as you've got it as a video file, then you can manage it any way you want. And that's how you make a quick video story with Adobe Premiere Rush. In the next chapter, I'm going to give you some resources to go on with and uh, answer any questions that come through. We'll see you in the next chapter. We do this session on Premiere Rush. I'm about to play a quick video for you that was created with Adobe Character Animator, which is a session we're going to be doing later in the year, and uh, Premiere Pro. I'm not sure if we're doing that later in the year, but um, you could use Premiere Rush. I could have used Premiere Rush, but because I'm a Premiere Pro user, I tend to use that more. But um, Character Animator is great because it's real-time animation and allows you to create little video uh, little puppets that you can have for your video that you manipulate in real time, literally as the camera is looking at your face, as you move your face and move your head, the puppet is doing exactly the same in real. Brilliant. So you're about to see a finished product with Character Animator. Uh, it's my personal assistant, Rob the Robot, who's going to be sharing some resources with you. Over to you, Rob. Hi there, it's Rob the Robot here from the Adobe Education team. Thank you for being involved with this Adobe in Education event. On behalf of the team, I would like to share some follow-up resources that will not only benefit you, but also your colleagues and wider education networks. Use this QR code or link to find out more about the Adobe Creative Educator Program. This is a badging program that involves multiple levels. To obtain the Level 1 badge, you need to do the Creativity for All course on the Adobe Education Exchange. 
The focus of this course is creativity in education rather than Adobe. You don't need to be an Adobe expert or even a regular Adobe user to get your level one badge. Inject Creativity Live is a live and on-demand show on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. It is recorded every second Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Time during the school terms. Each show features a practical demo from a teacher who is an Adobe education leader. The demo is of a practical Adobe application and how that teacher is using it in the classroom. Each show also features a thought piece from a leading education thought leader. The show also features me. Let your colleagues know about Inject Creativity Live and join the live audience every second Wednesday night. This QR and link take you to our contact form. Use this form to make sure you are on the email lists for our monthly updates for Australasian teachers. This QR and link takes you to the Australasian Adobe in Education coming events site to keep you and your colleagues informed with the wide range of professional learning opportunities that are freely available to all educators in any curriculum area and level. We hope you enjoyed this session. Please do share what you've learned with your colleagues and wider education networks and I will see you next time. Bye for now. All right, folks, I notice there's a couple of questions which we'll respond to after we've finished this chapter. But just to wind things up, let me share my screen again. And I'm happy to hang around for a few minutes if people need it. But this uh, link here, helpx.adobe.com, has a whole lot of basic tutorials on all the Adobe Creative Cloud applications, plus masterclasses as well. It's a one-stop shop for any help in the world of Adobe in education. This link here, and I'm going to put this one into the chat directly as a Vimeo link, because this one is a whole bunch of tutorials that gives you more detail on what I've just taught you. So if you want to go into this a little bit in more, slightly more depth than those edu tips on Premiere Rush that I created last year are well worth looking at and working with and sharing with your colleagues. The Adobe Education Exchange, edX.adobe.com, is about to hit one million teachers. Incredible resource. And if you're not already a member, I encourage you to just delve into it and just take what you think is going to be appropriate for you, especially our link with the Khan Academy. It's just incredible, our partnership now with them. That's the Adobe Creative Educator Community program that I talked about, uh, that Rob the Robot talked about as well. Level one, let me encourage you all to get at least level one. It's not about being an Adobe user, it's about being a creative educator. The whole concept is about creativity in education as opposed to being good at Adobe. So that's, uh, that's important. And if you want to be guided through that process and get the official badging for it, I, I run these courses once a month uh, to guide you through. And in South Australia time, the next one will be Tuesday the 15th of June at 3.30 p.m. till 5.30 p.m. And then we'll be doing one during the holidays too at 10 o'clock on the 7th of July. And I'm going to put my email address, kitchen at adobe.com, into the chat if you want to know some more about that, if you want to catch up on anything at all that we've talked about. The Inject Creativity Live Show, the next episode is tomorrow night, Wednesday night at 6 o'clock your time. Uh, so join us on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. We've got some great special guests, including Dr. Max Sleasia, who's an expert when it comes to video from Swinburne University. He's incredible, well worth watching. He's my special guest, uh, my main special guest for tomorrow. Uh, Paul McLean, he's uh, an education consultant from New Zealand. And Clara, all the way from Barcelona, will be joining us as well. She heads up the Adobe Global Education Community around the world. Folks, as I say at the end of all of these South Australian sessions, Sir Ken Robinson says, we don't grow into creativity, we grow out of it. Or rather, we get educated out of it. And let me encourage you, please, don't be one of those teachers that grows education out of people, out of your students. Teachers work tirelessly to bring students amazing learning experiences, and Adobe's here to help you be successful. There's our contact form again, and there's a feedback form there that the Department for Education would love you to fill out about these sessions. 
and that link, Cindy, if you can grab that link and put it into the chat, that would be helpful. The next session I'm running for you guys is on Character Animator, Tuesday, Thursday, the 24th of June, uh, 4 o'clock, I think, for your time, oh, 3.30 your time, I think. But uh, Cindy will be able to give you some more information about that. And I look forward to seeing you live. Uh, but if not, I hope you enjoy watching the recordings of all of that. And we'll see you then. Um, those watching who are with us live at the moment, I'm happy to hang around to answer some of your questions. Otherwise, we'll say goodbye to everyone. All the best. Bye-bye.